Hi, this is Miguel Castro, and welcome back to building end-to-end -end multi client service-oriented applications. In this module, I'll be talking about what SOA is and what makes it different from other architectures and application styles. I'll also be discussing some technologies that help you develop service-oriented applications, as well as technologies that I'll be using throughout this course. So to start with, what exactly is service orientation or a service oriented architecture or application? Uh, put simply, it's the decomposition of a system into autonomous or nearly autonomous units of responsibility and exposure. It's really a way to decompose a system, to break a system down into various parts. Now these parts can take various forms. This decomposition can be functional or it can be volatility based. In either case, what's common in both is that services, the main component in service orientation, essentially are orchestrators or managers that expose this functionality and abstract everything beneath them from the outside world. So service-oriented applications are based on what we call loosely coupled services. This means that between the services and the way they're exposed to the outside world are industry accepted standards and protocols. Now behind the services are a multitude of technologies. Just about anything can sit behind a service actually. A service-oriented application is essentially an API exposing functionality to the outside world through these standards and protocols that once again are industry accepted. A service orientation should not be thought of as a replacement to other programming paradigms, meaning it's not doing SOA instead of component orientation or object orientation. In fact, it's more of an evolution of the previous ones, and the previous programming paradigms and ways of doing things can still coexist in a service-oriented application. They're just kind of abstracted away behind the service wall. 